much hit. I feel uh, that they go hand in hand. You uh, talk about racism. Uh, you talk about discrimination and the uh, public case of uh, this uh, civil rights. Uh, so of course uh, they go hand in hand. Uh, you, you, there'd be no need uh, of having a revolution uh, had you not been fighting for your civil rights. Uh, this is a fact. Uh, the mere fact that you're fighting for your civil rights uh, means that you're inside of a revolution. So uh, consequently, uh, when you talk about uh, revolution, uh, this is the thing that uh, you're talking about. Uh, racism. Racism, when it is uh, practiced, uh, it ignites and makes you uh, think in terms of revolution. But that's the one thing that you don't have. And uh, this is very important uh, for us all to remember that if you don't have it, uh, then you are going to fight to get it. You're inside of a country. Uh, where you have been fighting uh, and requesting uh, in the rules and through the rules. You've been following the rules and uh, asking an opponent that has no conscience uh, to follow the rules, uh, has no conscience uh, to do uh, what is right. They don't have that kind of conscience. Why, well, if he uh, had that kind of conscience, you wouldn't be fighting uh, for these rights uh, that you are uh, so earnestly uh, requesting. And this is a fact. Uh, so, the mere fact, the uh, mere thought of you having to uh, fight for these rights uh, it says that you're in a country that has not granted them to you and let's, let's think about it, let's talk about it uh, the fact of the matter uh, is that uh, you uh, are fighting uh, for uh, freedom you're fighting for justice and you're uh, fighting for uh, equality uh, and that's the thing that uh, I would like uh, to tell uh, every uh, Negro out there because there, there's two revolutions we talked about before. While well, you have the uh, Negro Revolution, then you have the Black Revolution. Uh, in the Negro Revolution, uh, these are those that believe uh, uh, that you have a chance. You have a chance uh, in fighting uh, for uh, uh, the rights that you so earnestly uh, request. Uh, of course, those in the Black Revolution know uh, that the only way that you're going to get it, the only way uh, that you're going to be able to receive uh, these rights, violence and bloodshed, and uh, there's no, uh, so many instances of uh, sensing us uh, fooling ourselves, uh, unless we uh, focus on what must be done, then it'll never happen. Uh, for instance, uh, during the, uh, uh, the American colonies, when they were fighting, uh, the one thing that we did see uh, was that uh, uh, without violence, uh, they would have never got it. They wouldn't have got it. It was called the, uh, the Civil War. Or the American Revolution because they were fighting for independence uh, and discrimination and civil rights. You have to ask yourself uh, the question what is the most difficult uh, uh, prejudice uh, to surmount? And uh, in America, it is racism. And so, uh, in, in explaining in an earlier speech uh, that, that you just heard uh, about uh, revolution and what is it, uh, what is revolution, and you accept it. Consequently, we talked about uh, discrimination, we talked about uh, civil rights, and we talked about human rights. And this is the thing uh, that we're dealing with. Uh, so uh, racism is here to stay uh, because this country was built on the premise. And this is what we have to remember. It was built on the premise uh, that blacks uh, and Africans uh, born in America or the African of American birth uh, should never be treated as equal. This is a statement that Carnell West uh, made in 1997, uh, and, and I believe this. I believe this, uh, and, and anyone uh, in their right mind uh, would believe this, and if not, uh, they'll uh, be uh, totally insane uh, to not believe it. And this is the reason you have so many uh, blacks, uh, Negroes, and whoever you uh, would like to uh, entitle them, uh, that are going out of their mind. And I don't intend to do so. I don't intend to do so. I'm not going to lie down uh, to be lynched. I, I'm going to stand as a man. I think that the uh, black uh, race uh, should learn to stand as men, to die as men, and defend ourselves uh, like men, and take our rights uh, like men. Uh, so uh, racism has been practiced throughout the whole of human history, and uh, it appears 
uh, that racism has much to do with the inflexible and, and irrational attitudes and opinions held by uh, one member group, uh, and in this case, uh, the white group, while sociologically inflicting these opinions uh, directly on us, at the same time, uh, they expect us uh, to hold up uh, these rights. Uh, now here we are fighting in Korea, uh, here we are going into uh, Afghanistan and uh, Pakistan. Here we are searching for Saddam Hussein. Here we are uh, during this presidency of Barack Hussein Obama. Uh, we are, uh, uh, have uh, quote unquote, uh, there's no proof of it. I say again, there's no proof. Uh, but we have quote unquote uh, uh, caught uh, Osama bin Laden. And if that, if that is the case, then it is a shame. Uh, I, there are things that I don't believe. I don't believe that uh, Osama bin Laden uh, uh, single-handedly uh, can finance uh, terrorism. I do not believe that he bombed the uh, World Trade Center. Uh, this makes no sense. It makes no sense. And uh, you just, you, this is common sense. Uh, that, that one man uh, with, who, who hasn't uh, the power to truly feed nor finance an army uh, can uh, have men so dedicated that they will fly themselves in a trade tower. I think if you would uh, check the uh, record, uh, you and I would both find out uh, that uh, a gentleman that bought the trade tower uh, from uh, the uh, United States, bought it from the federal government, uh, cashed in on it six months later. And the, the firemen were said to have uh, set the explosion on the trade tower. And this is something that you should uh, uh, check. But everything uh, is blamed on us, everything is blamed on the black race. Uh, and so uh, there's something that has to be done uh, to challenge it and to uh, make a sizable difference. Uh, we are, uh, again, under the tragedy of uh, recent lynching of Troy Davis. And uh, in this uh, region's uh, recent uh, lynching of Troy Davis, why nothing uh, has been done about it. Uh, and uh, I make a prediction. Uh, uh, I don't claim to be uh, some unanimous uh, profit or anything of that nature, but I do make a prediction. Uh, because the white American uh, has went on uh, with violence and bloodshed, uh, because you continue to lynch us around this country, uh, where the day has come when the black man would grab the gun, the bullet, the knife, the razor, and uh, he would come for you to take your life. Uh, this is a prediction, uh, and, uh, the same prediction that uh, Yehoshua made before they hung him from the tree. Uh, uh, the prediction that he made that violence shall beget violence. And this is not a vengeance, this is plain common sense. Uh, it's not racism, it's plain common sense. That if you do something, uh, you should deserve a reaction uh, behind it. And uh, uh, that is the reaction uh, that uh, uh, will, will come behind uh, this kind of uh, action. Uh, that if you're violent with the race, uh, you expect that race to be violent with you. Uh, and that's a fact. Live by the sword, uh, that you're going to die by the sword. Uh, so uh, he has to be ready to uh, reap what he's planned. He's planned a year of violence, he's planned a time of violence. And now uh, blacks will be spreading all over this nation, ready to take his life. Uh, and this is not something that uh, they will themselves to do, but it's something that the white man has planted. And uh, he's been planning it uh, for a very long time.